Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 289. I am Brendan. You see Fight Night, Sean Strickland versus Abus Magomedov. All right, we're going to talk about the main card here. We're going to break down all of the fights round by round, talk about implications. We're going to go over all of those things. If you're looking for a specific fight breakdown, the timestamps are down below. Real quick, before we get started, if you like this kind of stuff, you like fight breaks down, subscribe to the channel. That way you know when the next video is coming out. Put out two or three videos every single week breaking down fights from different organizations. So if you like that kind of stuff, subscribe. Helps me out, and I'll let you know. All right, let's talk about Sean Strickland versus Abus Magomedov. <clears throat> so, a uh, little bit of history for this one. I, you know, we're gonna. We're, I've been trying to make these a little bit breezier lately, right? Instead of waxing on, uh, I. I think it's important to understand the context. So, Sean Strickland, if you look at the rankings, he's currently what number four, seven. My bad. Sorry, he's number seven. Uh, his, what, his last loss was to Alex Pajeda, who, you know, just fought for the title and obviously, or he was a title holder. He, he fought for the title, won the title, and then lost the, lost the rematch. And he's taken a Ghana guy in Magomedov, who, if you notice, is not in the rankings at all. And that's because nobody else wanted to fight in the timeline, in the timeline that he wanted to fight. Oh, he fought Nasruddin Im uh, Imovov and beat him too. Oh yeah, and he had he had that split decision loss to Jared Cannonier. Okay, I do remember that. He's fought so much, right? Though I do remember those fights. He doesn't have a lot of losses in the past what seven years, uh, five years really. Sorry, um, doesn't have a lot. So like, Nordine Taleb, Jack Marshman, Brendan Allen, Christoph Jaco, Uriah Hall, Jack uh, Jack Hermanson putting together a win streak there of six wins, and then taking on Alex Bejeda, who they were just putting Alex in there with a guy who just wants to strike so that they could give him the best chance to get that title, uh, the title shot so they could play that story. And it worked. And then he fought Jared Cannonier, who Jared Cannonier just put on a, a master class against uh, Marvin Vittori. Excellent fighter, fought for the title as well. And again, uh, it's a hard out and it was a split decision loss. You know, he outstruck him. I'd have to go back and watch the fight. I don't remember. I don't remember how I scored that one uh, from last year. I, I, I really don't. But uh, Nasruddin Imovov, that was a good win, great win. And then Abus Magomedov, you know, uh, taking on short notice, a relative short notice. And he's just he, a, a, new, a relative newcomer, somebody who had a 19-second finish in his first fight in, uh, in the UFC with Magomedov. So Magomedov was using the low kicks to start, and uh, he explodes with hooks. He's not connecting with a ton of them, but he's, you know, exploding in there looking to land big. Magomedov with the deep eye poke. Uh, Sean Strickland made a joke about it afterwards, about getting pregnant, how deep it was. Anyway, a ton of, uh, after about two or three minutes, he, you know, he says he can fight. A ton of distance kicks from Magomedov. Some of these kicks to the legs and body are crazy hard. Magomedov went for the takedown, and they get right back up. Magomedov landed more in this first round, and it's going to be hard to keep that pace is what I wrote down. So 32 to 11 for significant strikes in favor of Magomedov. Obviously, he landed more, did more damage, 10-9 him. But like I said, the, the that pace that he was keeping was going to be hard for him. Nice jab, double jab and a beautiful right hand from Strickland make the Magomedov back up early. Then uh, uh, Strickland was staying in his face. He's taking his time unloading four and five piece combos. Magomedov on the fence looking really tired. And then Strickland landed a bunch of really hard right hands. Magomedov sits down and then Mark Smith lets him get punched in the face for about 10 seconds. A huge finish for Strickland. Excellent win for him. And then he calls for a title shot. I think rightfully so. He's been in there uh, taking fights. He's really active in the division. I mean, who else? Are you, what else are you going to do there? Um, I think the biggest thing that gives him the the edge in the in the title shot picture is the fact that he has not fought Adesanya, right? Uh, Drakus Duplessis is also vying for that, but he has to get over Whitaker. I think if Duplessis beats Whitaker, obviously he's fighting for a title, no question. But if Sean Strick, if he doesn't, Sean Strickland is a good go-to. Paulo Costa's fought him already; hasn't fought in a while. Marvin Vittori uh, just lost, so he's not fighting for a title, most likely. Plus, he's already lost to Adesanya twice. Jared Cannonier's already had his shot, and then Alex Pajeda doesn't fight in this division anymore. So, what what are you going to do in this division? You're going to go outside of the top set, top seven, top eight, because you know Sean Strickland should be ranked in the top. Ah, man, that's going to be hard. I don't know if he's going to move up. He might move ahead of Paula Costa, and then Duplessis stays ahead of him. Maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You know, you got Brendan Allen, who's working his way up the rankings again after set, have, uh, having that setback. 
I think Allen's probably one, at least one win, probably two wins away from getting it. Uh, Kelvin Gaslam moved from the division. Chris Curtis had us another setback, you know, getting stabbed in the face. Um, it's it's just unlikely that a lot of these other guys are in the title picture. It is immediately as much as Strickland is. Strickland's ready to go now. He fights really often. He can he can go in there and fight Adesanya in three months, and be, we could be good to go. But like I said, Drikas Duplessis need, needs to fight Whitaker first, and then we'll see what happens. Because if Duplessis gets gets a Whitaker win, he's been calling out. He's got the whole African angle, bunch of different stuff that he's looking for to play against Adesanya, and Adesanya's even called him out already. So obviously that's the probably the number one go-to for the UFC. But if he has a lot, if he loses to Whitaker, which is a good possibility, then Strickland's always there to throw in. And like I said, he's interesting too because he has not fought Adesanya yet. Plus the trash talk and the bullshit that he says is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it just is. He's such a goober. The white trash wonder did it again. He calls himself white trash. Don't, don't, don't at me. Uh, Demir is Magulov versus Grant Dawson. So Grant Dawson, incredible talent at lightweight, really coming in here, trying to dominate. And that's exactly what we got for three rounds. We'll break it down, but it's a really simple, not simple what he was doing, but as an observer, very simple to talk about. So Dawson was switching stance and as he moved in, he was throwing big overhand left and then he gets an ankle pick, turns it into a single leg transition to the back and gets a body triangle. And that's the entire round. He landed some good, good strikes down there, some elbows, some different stuff. And, um, he ends up, uh, laying out some ground and pound, um, from the mounted position, three minutes and 55 seconds of control time, 23 to two for significant strikes in that first round. Clearly Dawson won that. I had that a 10, eight round. Second round here, Ismagulov landing a nice jab, really trying to avoid the overstepping so he doesn't get taken down, but then Dawson gets the lift and double leg, takes him down under total control. It looked like it was slow motion. He didn't try to slam him. He put him put him down, and then he went to the back and threw the, the body triangle on again. Another big round for Dawson. He wasn't on the back as long, so that's just a 10-9, and Ismagulov did land some stuff on uh, on the feet. He actually outlanded him 10-5, to but if you look at total strikes here, you know, 22-14, to and he did have 3 minutes and 50 seconds of control time. Not as much back control time, I didn't feel like, as the first round. And then the last round here, almost no striking. Uh, Dawson with the belly-to-back lift. The body triangle went right in. Uh, this this fight was, and that was the whole round, four minutes and 32 seconds of that control. Uh, he was going for finishes. It was important. You know, and Herb Dean is saying, stay active. Nope, nope, you don't get to say that. From, I as much as I don't like it sometimes, and sometimes I do, and it's, it's up to the referee's discretion, I do not like it in this scenario. If you have someone's back, there's no let's do something. You did a lot of some things to get to arguably the most dominant position in grappling or MMA, period. How many finishes have we seen from a guy who has his back taken, right? So I'm the guy who who someone's on my back. What is the possibility of me getting a finish? I don't think I've ever seen one. I'm sure there's some weird submission you can do or you can crank the legs. Obviously, if they put the hooks in and then they, they cross their ankles, you can put pressure on it. Most people aren't tapping to that, though. The point is, there's nothing for me but defense. All, all of the let's keep it busy, let's work, that was all done to get to that, get to the back. So I do not want to hear it. I am not a fan of that. I don't care how boring it is for people to watch. Even when um, Islam had uh, Volkanovsky's back, as much as it's not fun to watch and... You know, Volkanovsky, here's the thing, though. Volkanovsky was much more active, and he was in less danger than Ismogulov was. But arguably, just as boring to watch, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You put in the work to get the guys back. I mean, the next closest thing we have is Mount. And there's a ton of stuff you can do from there. But it's mo again, what 99.9 of its defense, but a ton of stuff that you can do there and stay active on the, but if you're, if the guy has your back, you're only looking to escape or not die. So I, I, I'm not a fan of that. Grant Dawson clearly, clearly won this one. I, I had it 30 to 26. If you look at the scorecards here, Mike Bell, 
agreed with me. He had that first round of 10-8, and the other two, Chris Lee and Saul Amato, did not, but they both gave it to the right person, so that's at least good. I, I would... I would say that first round is arguably a 10-8, um, but I mean, I would do it. I, I gave. I mean, I did do it. I gave it a 10-8. I think, I think he earned that very dominant round, close to the finish. All right, Max Griffin in. Max Griffin in. Max Griffin taking on Miles Morales. This one was hard to watch for the commentary. Commentary was so bad, so bad during this fight. Dude, everything Michael Morales did was, oh, he's so great, and look how hard he's hitting, and blah, blah, blah. Dude, he got outstruck in the first round. Second. Wait, what? Oh, I guess he didn't get outstruck in the first round. I felt like he did not lay, He did not land that much in the first round. Uh, they rush into exchange, um, then Morales using the long jab. Griffin was having issues finding his range for the first two minutes. Griffin landing a right, then a left as he bum rushes in on a takedown against the fence. The volume went to Morales. Oh, okay. I did read it right. Um, but he really only landed jabs. The best damaging shot was from Griffin with a great pressure for over a minute of that round. So I gave that first round to Griffin. If you look here, he had control time. The significant strikes were 15 to 11 in favor of Morales, but that was only that's a four strike difference in which I would give the edge to Griffin on damage. I felt like he landed the more damaging blows because most of that stuff that Morales, you can see 15 to 40, most of those things that he was throwing that the the commentary team was all all up in a tizzy about was missing or being blocked off the arms. So I gave that first round to Griffin. Second round here, Morales landing the double uh, double jab hard right, uh, then a hard right hand and another one making Griffin retreat. Uh, Griffin was standing his ground, firing back, landing some good shots in between. But Morales was stay. Um, he would, he just landed so much in that, and then he kept going. Morales going for it again, but the third time. Um, like, like he keeps going for these blitzes, right? He stands around and he's stationary and then he goes for a blitz and most of it misses, but he does because he's you know, 31 of 70. So he's missing most of his shots. But the thing is like he is landing in those blitzes and then he kicks Griffin in the nuts for a third time. He did it twice in the first round. It wasn't because Griffin just waved it off. Hey, like, let's keep going. And then he kicked him a, kicked him a third time here. Uh, Griffin got tagged a couple times in this round, uh, putting Morales over the top in damage for sure. So 31 to 15 for striking uh, in favor of Morales. Obviously his round. I had it 19-19. Hard left hand from uh, landed from Griffin. Then he landed a nice right hand behind it. Morales blitz again, but doesn't land anything. Just big movements. Griffin got the takedown against the fence, but they get right back up. Uh, commentary is particularly, like I said, is particularly bad because everything they think everything from Morales is landing. It's not. Um, he landed about half his shots, which isn't bad, twenty six of fifty four. But it's just like he wasn't. Yes, he 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 won this fight. He won this round absolutely. He got the takedown right at the end of the round. Uh, but it's not that he didn't win this fight. He, like I said, he absolutely did. But it wasn't a blowout. All that stuff that he was throwing in there, he has a lot of stuff to work on, and he's still an incredible talent. See, look, all three judges gave Max Griffin the first round, but the commentary team was talking about how you know Griffin was down too, and he needed to win this last round, or he needed to finish. So I'm saying they, they were not watching the fights correctly. They they were not seeing the right angles. They have the benefit of actual views. All right, Ariana Lipsky versus Ariani Lipsky versus Melissa Gatto. All right, this one was about there was a fight like this on the uh, prelims with one person with a lot of volume and the other person landing some bigger shots. So Gatto was circling near the warning track, making two full laps and another one and then another one. She just kept circling the warning track, not firing out a ton. You look at the striking numbers here at 16 or 28 to 16 in favor of Gatto, but all of those were jabs at a distance. It weren't doing a ton of damage. Um, there was a, a nice right hand and a decent jab um, from Lipsky at one point. Uh, Lipsky landed a knee as Gatto went for the takedown. There wasn't a lot to score in this first round. I leaned towards Lipsky because she had the pressure. So, like, if you just look at the striking numbers here, it looks like Gatto's way out ahead. But there wasn't a big difference in damage. Now, the person who was pressuring the other the entire time was Lipsky, right? Now, she was pressuring the entire time Gatto was on the retreat. It, it was a close round because there wasn't a ton of damage. But I feel like Lipsky landed the more damaging shots and she landed enough of them to put it in her favor. If you land 30 jabs and the other person lands a giant hook, the giant hook is probably worth more than those 30 jabs. 
it, it's just it's just the way it is. It's supposed to be damage, and its immediate damage outweighs uh, cumulative damage. It's in the rules. Lipsky right in on the pressure again. They're exchanging more early in the second round. They exchange right hands and leg kicks. Lipsky uses the underhook for the throw, and they get right back up. Gatto in on the clinch, landing some knees. Gatto had more output and some decent control. The damage from Lipsky kept it close, so I could go either way, but I gave the second round to Gatto. If you look at the striking numbers here again, 33 to 26, it looks like it's in favor of Gatto, but you could go either way, and it's because of the damage. There wasn't a big difference in the damage, the damage part, it says that Gatto had more control, two minutes of control time in this round, but I I gave it to Gatto, like I said. Moving on, nice right hand in this last round, on this last round, and a nice right hand to left hook combo from Lipsky. Huge right hand from Lipsky staggered Gatto in the, in, in the middle of the round, early to the middle of the round. Gatto went for the takedown, ends up slipping off Lipsky uh, and slipping over the top. This fight was not good. It was really boring to watch. The striking numbers were even, twenty four to twenty four in this last round. Lipsky did more damage in this last round though. She just did, and again. The commentary team on this one was like talking about how Gatto was up two rounds and Lipsky needed a finish and this and that. It's not the case. Um, if you're looking at the scorecards here, uh, Adelaide Bird gave the first round, the first two rounds to Gatto. Not upset about that. That's possible. Uh, Saul Diamato here giving uh, all three rounds to Lipsky. Again, that's that's possible. That's not how I saw it. I gave that second round to Gatto, but I said it was close. <clears throat> and then Chris Lee giving the first round to Gatto and the last two rounds to Lipsky. Again, possible that you know nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with it it's it's it was all over the place this is not exactly the best uh judges i think the best judge um that was on that board was Saul Diamato. Uh, it's, a, it's a good thing that Lipsky got the win because i feel like she was the one actually trying to fight and get the finish here where you know gato was on the tr retreat just trying to point fight and i'm never a fan of that Ismael Bonfim versus Benoit saint -Denis. <clears throat> This fight was domination. Domination. Bonfim landing the hard right hand right away, and then saint -Denis was <clears throat> landing his hard left, left kicks to the body over and over. He was just spanning left kicks to the body. Just pop, 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 constantly. Santini got the double leg and then right into mount at the four minute mark. Bonfim got right back up, but then, you know, Bonfim was defending the takedown and landing a hard left hand and a decent elbow. Santini uh, was relentless with the takedown attempts, though. He got to the back body lock, got the back, and then Santini got the finish with the rear naked, jo rear naked choke. It was a great finish from him. Excellent. Um, and he said he's here, like he's here, and he's, uh, you know, he's really trying to challenge for. Uh, is he, this is the lightweight division, right? Yeah, he's he's trying to move up in talent. He's trying to fight some of these uh, the ranked guys. Uh, so he called out some of the Europeans in the in the lightweight division. I think he called uh, Mateusz Gamrot. I don't know if he called out Faziv. But ba basically saying, like, I want to fight them over in Europe because he's French and he wants to fight over there. So that would be good. I'd be down for that. All right. Bruno Fajeda versus... Nursultan Ruzaboyev. All right, this fight was not a very long one. Uh, Ruzaboyev landed a low kick, and then a year later, uh, Fajera lands one. It felt like there was nothing going on early. Uh, and then Ruzaboyev landed a nice one, too. And then Fajera landed a low kick, and Ruzaboyev landed a hard right hand to counter, followed up with a couple shots on the ground, and it was over, right? It was not a long fight. Not a long fight at all. It was, it, if I, overall, great, great fight, great win for him. Uh, if I had to uh, watch this over again, I would skip the Lipsky versus Gatto fight. Uh, Benoit saint fight goes pretty quick, so that one's not bad. Unless you're really into gra grappling and you want to watch domination, I would skip the Grant Dawson fight. The The main event was good. Um, it felt like it moved pretty quick. Like there was a lot of downtime because of uh, the finishes. But you know, if you got something else to do, it wasn't too bad. I would, I'd say this is watchable, the decent, decent for the main event, main card. Like I said, I would skip the skip the Lipsky fight and then skip the Grant Dawson fight, unless you're really into those two. I'd skip those ones. 
Um, the Mike, the Max Griffin, Michael Morales one, that one wasn't bad. It was fun to watch. So I would watch uh, the three, those four fights. That's not bad. All right, uh, that's it. So if you like this kind of stuff, if you like this video, click the like button. I'd super appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel so that way you know when the next video is coming out. I'll be putting out the prelim video next. So go ahead and watch that one if you want to watch the breakdowns over there. If this is the only video you watch this week, thank you very much for stopping by. I love you all. Have a great week.